Okay, so it's been a long time since I got back with uh, on this fan, and uh, I was trying to get the stator out of it, out of it, and that didn't work. So I just pulled. I just was careful. I heated up them with heat gun for like probably 15 seconds or 20, and then pulled it out. Make sure not to hold it in one spot if you're gonna do it. Just move it around a little bit. But I, I was able to p slowly pull these wires out, get enough slack on them where I took my wire strippers. I, I could use these, but I just use these because they're much better. And uh, strip the wire and make sure to hold it, hold the end of it so that way you don't, or I mean to hold, never mind. Just hold the wire so that way you don't pull it out of the leads or you don't pull it out of the stator. And for this one, I normally don't do this, but... This was the only way to do it since I could. This, sometimes the stator gets stuck because these rivets in, um, or they're like, never mind, they're like rivets. Sometimes they go deep enough where they can actually go into the stator and um, they'll catch on it and it won't slide out like it's supposed to. Basically, 95% 90, of these fall out, or whenever I do that, the PVC method that I was showing you in the video. 95% of those come out the first try. This is probably the second one I've had out of all my Emerson fans that I've taken the stators out of that has not come out. It's not a big deal because Emerson did this because they knew that, well, normally this was like if if the wire got pulled out or broke over like a 20 years or something, they were smart enough to think, well, maybe we should make some way to be easier so they didn't have to take it all apart. You literally just take the, the bullet off and then redo a head wire. Just pull these out and redo the head wire. That's how easy it was. On most pans, that's not even the case, which, which kind of sucks, but... Emerson was smart enough. That's why I like him so much, but... Okay, so I got everything off for this one. I resoldered it back on. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to figure out the um, how it's wired up. Now, if you're taking apart an Emerson fan and you can't find a wire diagram about it how to wire it up then then make sure then the easiest way is what I do or what you can do is if you have you need one of these to, for it to be impossible what you can do is you could take your ohm readings or whatever or your uh, set it to ohms I have it like this this is a cheap one it needs new prongs but so what I if you if you want what you can do is you can mark mark the wires going into the stator so what you can do is once you cut it you can you would put it's kind of hard to do one-handed so i would put one end or uh, one prong to one wire if you want to figure out which one it is and then what you would do is you'd put the other to the other side to see if that's the correct wire and if it is then you would figure out where that's connected and um dang it i don't have the stator to show or i don't have the the choke coil or b coil to show but it's upstairs but yeah that's how you that's how you check if you if there's no wire diagram made and i know some of you some of you guys are like i have no idea how to read a wire diagram i have no idea how to how to do it or even how to figure it out but it's actually pretty simple if there's a drawing of how how it's wired up and not like just a picture of how this how the switch is if it's more like if it if it shows visually on the switch where it's connected then it's much easier but since i've uh done it so many times it's kind of it's kind of easy to tell how it's wired up but okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna show you how to figure out wire a b and c or even one two three on the on the wire diagram and what the different ohm meet, uh, readings mean so it's really hard to do one-handed so I'm gonna go get my tripod okay so now I'm gonna show you how to figure out the ohm or the ohm readings okay so I'm gonna put this here so you can visually see the ohms and how how to read them or how to figure it out okay so if I take it between these two wires and usually on the wire diagram I'll show I'll show one on picture in like a couple of minutes once I get done with this. Okay, so check how if the fan if there's no short in the 
in the winding or if this head wire is broken what you would do is you just take the ohm ohm uh, the ohms on here and then check and do it with each different wire okay I've got readings all on them all now to figure out if your stator is healthy with Emerson electric fans I'm not sure if this applies to every fan but I know it applies to Emerson electric fans so if you have what what should happen is your middle so you have three ohm readings your highest ohm reading your lowest and then your middle ohm reading your middle and lowest should add up to the highest for you have a healthy stator it could be off by a two or three ohms and it's okay but it, if it's like off by more than 10 then I'd be worried but don't don't say that's a dead stator because sometimes I had a I had an Emerson electric fan where the it was just bad leads going in there because I had I I was just testing them I hadn't replaced them yet because I didn't know if it was a good stator or not I should have gone all the way into the stator and cut them off or not all the way into it but I mean I should have taken the stator out and then figured out if they were touching the housing or not and just messing up the ohm readings because it, it I was getting wrong ohm readings so. I'll stop rambling. Okay, so if we take it from this wire, which is uh, has a red, um, which has red um, cloth in it, and there's a green right here. But if I take red and then uh, no no color on this wire, I get a hundred a hundred and fifty eight ohms. Now you have to check them all before you know what the highest ohm reading is. But I've checked this one before, so I know this is the ohm reading, the highest ohm reading. Okay, so this red and uh, bare, which I'm going to call that. So now if I take bare, you, you always have to use one, at least one of the wires, or at least one of the wires you have to use for uh, the scent. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just pick a wire that you want to use for both, uh, to find ohm readings for these two of these. So that way you, you can figure it out pretty easily. So if I use bare again, the bare wire, or nothing, no color, and then I go to this green one, then I get a hundred. Sometimes, which sometimes, just let it uh, let it stop fluctuating, and then you get your own reading. Because sometimes it you have to hold it still. Okay, for this one, I'm getting 126 ohms, which that is the mid mid ohm reading. Okay, so if I now, since I got 160 or 160 or yeah, 160 on these two, and then 100, and, what was it again? I forget. And then 100 and 1820. Okay, so 160 on uh, red and uh, bare. And this is not going to be the same for everything, but you just pick one wire. And then now, if I go to bare to green wire, it would be 100. And 28 so then what I would do is I would go red to green wire and I'm getting 34 I don't know if it's a little fluctuating about 33 or 34 ohms so you would basically add the mid which is 128 and um, I think 100 and and then the low, which was 33, so that's like 160, or I mean, 100. I think it was 128. I'm not sure, but I know it adds up to 160. It doesn't have to add up exactly. It could be one or maybe like five ohms off, I'd say for the max. So I know that this is a healthy stator, and um, so now I, I've debunk. I've uh, figured that out. Now, I'm gonna go get my. I'm gonna pause the video and put on screen a ohm, uh, a wire diagram, so that way you guys can, that way I can show you what I was talking about with the different, um, the different ohm readings and what they all mean. I'm just going in depth in this video, so it's pretty long. I'll probably put in the description a time card to the wiring part. If you guys just want to get skipped through that but yeah let me go get let me go draw my wire diagram for this fan and then I'll get back to you ok 
Okay, so what had happened is 18 minutes of my video got corrupted and I got to this part which um, took a while and um, I didn't actually show it just got corrupted in the video so you won't actually see what I did but okay so I'll just I'll, uh, go over it really fast so what I did there's a the shaft goes through here I just put some of this this grease on it a little bit a little light film of it on there and then I put it in there or I put it down in this uh, um, whatever it's called on this collar and then to for this collar also make sure to clean that out to clean out all the old grease in there and then on this collar uh, I don't know what year they got rid of these where they stopped making them adjustable but on this fan it's a adjustable so what you can do is you can uh, you pull this out and there's, there's a spring and then you lock it into the pin and it'll oscillate more on that side and if it's like you usually do this if it's wall mounted but if you have it in a in like a corner where you want it to like oscillate more on one side then you can do this but it's just it's just more um, more I don't know you can adjust the stuff more but and then what you do is you have to align uh, these up with the hole in here and make and then you have to leave you also have to have this on for um, for the when you put these in so that way you could put this back on and then you get it on both sides and you get this you put this through here and then or uh, this wing nut through here now if you're what you would do is you would if you have a, a wall mounted you take this out and put it in this one but you'd have to lean it uh, lean the head uh, back more like this far or even more for it to, for you to uh, wall mount it. And what I always do is I always make sure this is level because you don't you don't want it tipped back all the way because then all the oil goes back and it just doesn't circulate as well. And then I was showing you how the the wire diagram was. So this is wire. What was it? This is this is how it looks like. Oh, this is how it looks like on my wire diagram. Let me see. Sorry about this crappy video, but I had to redo it. Okay, here, this is this one goes to the capacitor, but since I took the capacitor out of it, it's not in in the circuit. Okay, so this is wire three in my wire diagram, and this is wire two, and then wire one will go straight to the capacitor. But since I don't actually have the capacitor in my hand, you can't you can't tell. And then um, what I did is I marked, I figured out the wires. I already said how I did that. And, there and I was just using my wire diagram so what you would do is you just pick one wire and then take the ohm readings from these two and then the ohm readings from this these two and you can actually figure out if one if one of the numbers is the same in one of these wire diagram or I don't know okay so one and one was my base for these uh, in the wire diagram for the wires since this is one I did two and one and then two and three and I figured out that this was one since um, I used one twice in it in um, figuring it out but I, I didn't know this was one at the start I didn't mark it until now I just use I have a label print uh, label maker so that's what I use for these you can just use tape and mark a B or C or one two three I did one two three because I was lazy and I didn't care okay and then in, when um, my wire diagram when it says power that's just the cord and the capacitor is that square but that's the old capacitor in the fan it doesn't have to be that big but um that's what they use and it has pcbs you want to replace it and what you do is sometimes they'll have the microfarad in it sometimes they won't but you want to get the microfarad exactly how it is and then the vac or what how many vac or whatever it says you want to get that higher than what it act, what it, um, what value it has because it was meant for a lower voltage than the voltage we have today, and it it'll last longer if you have it higher higher back. So I think I went over everything that I needed to do that messed up. Oh yeah, and here's the bottom of the speed coil, just so you can see see uh, see that. And then yeah. Okay, so I went over everything. And uh. So the wire diagram that I have only works for Emerson Electric fans that are capacitor run. The ones without capacitors have wire going from the speed coil out, and that's where the wire that the capacitor 
used to be uh, wired would go to that one. But it it's wired up uh, differently, so don't if you if yours does not have the capacitor, don't use my wire diagram for it. If it has two wire if it has two wires coming out of the motor, you don't it doesn't matter how you wire it up, but you have to make sure that you obviously you wire it up how it's the same way it was. You just don't have to identify which wire is which since it's uh, alternating current current. With this, you do because there's three wires. If it was two, then it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't have to identify the wire, but you'd still have to wire it up how it was. On this one, I have to because I have to figure out which wire goes to the capacitor, which wire goes to uh, this part of the speed coil, and then which wire would go to basically power behind here. So and I basically went over that. Let me get to. Um, yeah, let me get to putting it together. I'll also show how to oil it, but. And I put the wire, the type of wire I used, I put a, it's gonna, there's gonna be a link in the description on that wire where I bought it since this is really flexible and it works really well. Just get three wire, head wire, just look up head wire or cloth wire that's three conductor or three wires and you'll find tons of places. But this stuff is a little more expensive than the other stuff. But it's worth it because it's really flexible. Some of the other stuff isn't as flexible, but this is 18 gauge. I used to use 16 gauge, but it was really thick and it wouldn't fit through these grommets. So, and another thing about grommets on most of these Emersons, they use screw in grommets. So don't try to pull this out. You have to unscrew it. I'm pretty sure you go clockwise unscrew. I'm not sure. Don't don't take my word on it. But I just know they're screwed in. Okay, I'll stop. Jeez, I need to stop talking, but. Okay, so you just clean this out. Also, if it's got original paint, don't paint over it because it's worth more with the original paint than it is with your paint. Because you can paint it crappy and then nobody's going to want to buy it. Unless it's a rare fan, but still, don't do that. It's, it's really annoying and it just frustrates us fan collectors. So, Okay, so make sure to put this bullet on and put it through like this before you actually um, wire it in because then then you have to undo everything and put this back on. It's just not fun. Okay, so you just put this on here. And then, um, let me see. Yeah, that's basically it. And then you put it through here. Hopefully my... There. Okay, so it goes through there. Out through the base. Let me... I need to fix my work, uh, workspace. I will also show you probably in another part three video on how to about the <clears throat> about the gearbox and how to re-grease that and everything, how I do it, and what grease I use. So. Okay. Also those collars, the collar that I was talking about right here. Can you see that? Yeah. The collar I was talking about right here is made out of pot metal, so be very careful about it because pot metal is brittle. And then, however much I need coming out of here. What I do, you can tie a knot for these um, if you um, for a strain relief, or you can use a strain relief clip. I'm not sure if anybody sells them, but if you're going to use one of those clips uh, where they clip on or some or a zip tie or something, put two layers of electrical tape on and then put the zip tie over it or a uh, friction tape or whatever tape you uh it's electrical put that on there so that way it doesn't dig into your uh in, into your wire when it oscillates so that way it um yeah well, i don't know what i'm trying to say it, it just won't ruin it and then if you don't if you don't get a capac if you don't get a uh what am i saying if you don't get a grommet up here just put electrical tape or friction tape, like two layers of it, so that way, when it's uh, riding against this, it won't actually cut into the wire. And, yeah. I'm kind of rambling in this video, just because I had to make up so much of what I lost in the video. So, this wire is really easy to make a knot. The other stuff is extremely hard. And that's why I wouldn't do the knot anymore. But, am I going to have enough room for that? Let me see. 
Sometimes I have to make sure I have enough room to actually do this knot. Actually, gonna leave the speed coil in here. I'm just making sure that everything that else will fit. Okay, with that knot, it'll fit. And another thing that I was gonna say is the length that I use for the head wire is 19 inches. Measure out 19 inches, and that's perfect. That's the perfect amount of head wire that you need for for your fan. And make sure you have enough, and it's not too tight when it oscillates. See how it's not tightening up? On a lot of GE fans, they used uh, they didn't use um, the, enough head wire, and it would tighten up. It'd be really it'd be like this tight, and when you oscillate, that's really you don't want that to happen because it's really bad, and it can pull out of the stator. So always leave enough, maybe not ex too much, but this is this is probably the perfect amount for the head wire. So that's that's how much I, I use 19 inches of it for on all, all my Emerson fans, even the well. Even on the 12 inch one, so yeah, that's how I do, uh, do that. Now, let's get to the fun part wiring and soldering. Oh, I also forgot to mention since my other video got corrupted. Um, is this one okay? I'm gonna pause it. Okay, there. Okay, so for this one, I am going to go over. I'm gonna go over soldering but in my last video when I soldered it up um, it got corrupted I'm pretty sure and I, I don't know just look up soldering tutorials how to solder a uh, wire together to figure that out cuz I just I just got too lazy and I didn't actually video me soldering it together but what I do is I use heat shrink tubing make sure to put the heat shrink tubing on before but don't actually heat shrink it until you got the solder done and then you put it over the solder that you did and what you want to do is I don't use I use this type of solder rosin uh, rosin core solder and it, oh, it has flux on it so I don't actually need to use flux since it's actually in the solder so I don't have to waste my time with that but on some solders you do have to use flux and then you can take some steel wool and clean off the wire if it's not if it's not um, actually attaching itself to your old wire and I, I haven't had to have I haven't had to do that since I have this stuff this stuff is really good you can basically I think um, AutoZone has it I don't know where my dad bought that but since Radio Shack's out of business you, you have to kind of find stuff now but okay I'm kind of rambling on but just got to get a lot of information out since a lot of people don't know how to do this stuff not saying that that's bad, it's just not everybody's going to know how to rewire a fan. There are some fans out there that I have no idea how to rewire and I don't want to rewire them unless I own them. You see these huge pedestal fans? That has five wires coming out of it and there's probably like ten ways to wire this thing up correctly, but there's like a bajillion other ways to wire it wrong. And that thing was a chore to get to wired up, and I didn't even make the wire diagram myself. I had somebody else made the wire diagram, and I'm so thankful they did, because that th that thing was a pain in the butt. But they're they're awesome fans once they get you get them wired up. It's just they're really annoying because the switch would always fail on them. But okay, so I got everything set up. Now let me get my wire diagram out and figure out how everything is wired up. Okay, so I will have to clip uh, these off. Let me set, set up my. Let me set up my um, soldering iron. This is my oil thing. Geez, I need a bigger. I, soon I'm gonna get a bigger workbench. There's one like for 20 bucks that's really huge that was at a state sale that I'm gonna get soon. I have to just. Buddy's gonna hook me up with it, so I don't have to worry about that. But okay, citizen in video. Just gotta make sure. Uh. <coughs> ah, jeez. Yeah. Okay. So right now I'm just taking out 
these two old wires and I'm just going to solder them off. This soldering iron I have was probably, is, uh, from the 50s. Also, don't inhale the smoke. That's why I have a fan running. Oh, jeez, it just pulled out. Oh, whatever. Okay. Okay, there. Oh. Now I gotta get this wire. Also, try not to heat up this, um, this, uh, what is it? Gotta clean that off a little bit. I don't have a sponge, so. I don't have a sponge, so I just have to scrape it off. Okay. So try not to heat up this, um, resin or fiberglass or whatever it is, because you don't want to melt it. Now, let's see. What else was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Okay, I have to undo, undo this part. Is this in frame? Yeah, it is. Okay, so I have to undo this. You can also clean this off with, oh yeah, since it got cut out, CRC cleaner. Use this on, um, on anything electrical. You can clean the contacts with it and everything, so yeah. Occasionally check the video. Okay, so, undo that. Make sure. I usually put everything in a jar, or a... Uh, solo cup or whatever some way to keep it keep all your parts together without having to put them on the table I always hate oh it's still hot I always hate it when people just set things on the table I used to do that and I would lose things and it's not smart so don't do it okay, <sighs> okay so I got this off now let's see it right there now let's see how my wire diagram I have it set up on here. Did I mention that these, my wire diagrams for only capacitor motors or whatever? I don't know. Okay, for Emerson capacitors, run motors. Okay, so I have wire two going to this. You also might want to take off more of this uh, cloth. It's just for decoration. It's not actually supposed to. Um, it's not actually insulation. I mean, it kind of is, but it's just for show. So. I do have some crimps that I can use. Okay. okay, so I can crimp this on. channel lock pliers. Okay, number two. Probably could have trimmed some of this off.
this whole stuff fit on there. I guess not. I might need a. on there decently. Okay. Wire two, got that everything. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to take off more of the sheathing or or um whatever whatever jacketing or wire jacketed wire. Um, it's light. I need to hurry up and do this. Usually whenever a fan doesn't come apart easily or I get stuck on something or I mess up really badly or I need a new part made because of my mistake. I get really demotivated. And I don't want to work on it anymore. I know a lot of people have that. Usually I let it sit for like a couple of days and then I get back to it. And this thing <laughs> has been sitting for three days. I've done nothing to it since the last uh, time I took it apart until now because dang stator would not come out and uh, I really wanted to take I, I really wanted to get the stator out to do it properly but how Emerson Electric made it you don't actually have to take the stator out to re to rewire it you just pull it through the hole you have to uh, heat it up though with the heat gun before you do that so it's more malleable but but, um, I usually just, uh, take the stator out, put heat shrink tubing over the leads, and leave, I, I don't cut it, I don't cut straight, or I don't solder right into the, uh, right into the, uh, stator. I usually leave, like, at least an inch or two of wire, uh, probably maybe three inches or something, I don't know. I always leave a lot of wire, um left on the stator so that way if you're if somebody has to replace your your um your head wire they have some room to actually uh some lead uh room to actually rewire it because that's what i think about in the future i always hate it when people do it straight into the i mean it's still good it's just leave an leave at least the max amount of wire that you can that would actually fit in here or fit into the housing so that way somebody in the future can actually do this hopefully there will actually be people that will still want to do this in the future but okay still recording good okay so let me get this set up I'm hooking up wire too you don't have to get a crimp like I am I'm just doing it professionally how I want it to be you can just uh, you can just um, make a ring with your wire and then do that but I want to do it this way because I don't want to have to redo it or whatever okay I need to get this hand shoot Normally I'd have a wrench by to do this, but I don't have one, so I'll use my needle nose pliers. I just tighten it a lot, and then put this uh, nut back on here for the cord. This is this is where the cord goes. You don't have there's no there's no uh, you don't the cord's not polarized, so it doesn't actually matter where you hook it up. But um, that's why it's so easy. You just put a cord in, just hook it up to these two terminals, and it's. Just, the easiest thing ever. Okay. So yeah. 
I didn't put any CRC cleaner on this one because I just cleaned the contacts and it's not that dirty. Just make sure to clean off all the cobwebs and everything. You don't want that on there because that's bad. Okay, let me get some more of my wire for the capacitor. Let's see, how much do I need? Probably this much. I'm just getting lamp cord. I got a lot of it. So. What is that? Oh, that's a bunch of that stuff. Let's pull it in two for single wires. And then I just put this back over in my pile of fans. But I can let's take off a little bit of it fourth of an inch taken off. I love this um this wire wire stripper it's the best. I use it all the time. And it's so much easier than the other wire stripper because you actually get accurate um, measurements if you move this thing to see how much you want. I don't actually know um, I don't actually know where my dad got that but it's the, I love I, it's so useful. Okay, so here's the annoying part where you have to, feels like you have to have like more than one hand to do this. Oh, shoot, is that long enough? Let's see. Yeah, whatever, that's long enough in my, my book. Okay, so, let's see, where's my book, or where's my notebook? Everything. You can pause the video for I'll put a I'll put a timestamp for everything or most things. Okay, so wire three is gonna go right here. It's right there. Wire three. Now let me solder this on first. Where did I put my solder? And one uh, one other thing. These Emerson fans, these single bearing Emerson fans, don't have to use fan wicks, so you don't have to replace it. On other fans, you do have to replace it. I know that Emerson does have fans that do use it. They're two bearing, they're model number 6250, and then a, a letter, whatever. But those are the Golden Jubilee nickname brass bladed fans. Or no, not brass, a, a, a bronze. What am I talking about? Okay, so I gotta wire this on, and then I gotta wire. This is the wire to the capacitor. So if you got a capacitor that's the right um, right value, then you could do that. Okay, I don't know if you, how much you can see of that. I'm trying my best. There now, I'm gonna wire up number three, which it's gonna be a pain in the butt because it's like. There, I'm gonna hold it down. Just, 
I don't have a sponge to use to clean off my... What the heck are my cats doing? Whatever. I don't have a sponge to clean off, um... Clean off my soldering iron, so I just use a... I just scrape it off. Okay, that's still hot. Careful about that. There's no point in replace, uh... Repairing, uh... What is it? These right here that go straight into the speed coils. Just make sure it's still connected when you solder it on. Unless unless these are broken. In the oh. <laughs> I just did it. I just touched it. Careful, that's still really hot. Okay. Now, wire one goes to the capacitor. That's where this wire comes in hand. Just half an inch off of that wire. Is that on the, a little more than a half an inch. Okay, twist that up. And make sure this wire one that up you can use twi uh you can use um what was i gonna say you can use heat shrink tubing and solder this but since i'm gonna be replacing the, all most of these capacitors i don't actually solder it on i just um take my cat right away i just put electrical tape over it oh no i have friction tape what am i doing Electrical tape is annoying whenever it melts. I only use that for permanent stuff. Friction tape. That's, you can find it at Home Depot, but use the 3M stuff. I only use the best. I only use 3M electrical tape because that stuff is much better than the other crap that's out there that sucks. Also use the 3M friction tape. It's really nice. But... This stuff is what they used back in the day, and that's what you find mostly on these fans. Uh, that's like what they used instead of heat shrink tubing, because they didn't have it back then. I just use this to cover it up. Normally you'd solder this on, but since I'm taking it off, I don't really care. Okay, so I got that. wired up. Now let me go get the capacitor. But I gotta put this going out one side. This capacitor goes out here. Okay, so I can pull this through. And now what you do, leave some of this. Now what you do is you angle this, uh, angle the, is it in the frame? Yeah. Angle, angle the, uh, os the, what am I trying to say? Just angle the switch out, push it, uh, put it through here, and then you're gonna slowly pull the wire up while you put. No, I want this on the bottom. And put your wire number three underneath this mounting thing, so that way it doesn't get caught on top. Because I've had that happen; it's annoying. And then once you pull the wire through, wait, is my knot good enough? It's good. Okay, my knot's good. Just make sure it's not gonna. That it's not gonna pull your wire. Or yeah. Okay, so I got that set up. There, now I can put my um let me find my screws for my screws for my um is this the right thing? Right screws. Yeah, they're both the same size. Make sure that you know where each screw goes. Usually, the longer screws go on the bottom, and the shorter ones go heat on holding up the speed coil. The shorter screws are really small. 
and also on that grommet if your fan has it. I know that the 50, uh, I think like 1950 is the last year that they used that type of grommet, and then, uh, and then they went over to no grommet, and there would just be a knot in in the in the motor um, motor bullet or whatever. This is kind of a hard and actually tricky part. I usually drop the screw more than like probably five times. But once you get it, it's really easy. There's no easier way to do this. You could get the bottom one, but I usually get the top and then I have to usually hold it. Wow, is that the first time I didn't actually drop it? Hmm. Okay. Shoot, it's been caught. This side, the bottom, which is not fun. Got that. Screw it in. Screw that in. Don't do it extremely tight, but do it tight enough where it's not going to vibrate. Because sometimes if your fan is really loud, either it's the loose, loose coil like this, or it's a loose. Um, loose switch which can vibrate and whenever your fan starts up it sounds really loud so there's that and you can take some fine use only use fine steel wool on this to clean the contacts and you can use that crc cleaner if this thing is really stiff which i've never had one of those that are, that's actually stiff so these two wires go straight to the to the capacitor and i need to go get my cord to wire that up probably and then after that, I'll show you how to, and I'll, I'll show you how to, what am I trying to say? I'll show you how to oil and then put back, the, oh, I almost lost one screw. That would have been bad. And then I'll show you how to put um, it back together and how to oil it. Okay, so now, shoot, I gotta pause the video.